Hi, I'm Bob. Welcome back to the introductory econometrics course. Today, we will solve the computer exercises one to four for chapter sixteen, simultaneous equations models. In the textbook, introductory econometrics, a modern approach, the seventh edition by Professor Jeffrey Woodridge. Let's find answers to computer exercise one. In part one, a model to estimate the effects of smoking on annual income, perhaps through lost work days due to illness or productivity effects, is as follows: Where cigarettes is the number of cigarettes smoked per day on average? How do you interpret beta one? One more cigarette smoked per day is estimated to change income by 100 times beta one percent, holding education and age fixed. In part two, to reflect the fact that cigarette consumption might be jointly determined with income, a demand for cigarettes equation is as follows. Where cigarette price is the price of a pack of cigarettes, and restaurant is a binary variable equal to unity, if the person lives in a state with restaurant smoking restrictions. Assuming these are exogenous to the individual, what signs would you expect for gamma five and gamma six? According to the demand law. Holding other factors constant, cigarette demand decreases as its price increases. So gamma five should be negative. The restaurant smoking restriction will reduce the demand for cigarettes. So gamma six should be negative too. In part three, under what assumptions is the Income equation from part one identified. Under the assumption that cigarette price or restaurant smoking restriction has a partial effect on cigarette demand in equation two, and they do not appear in the income equation one, we can use the two excluded exogenous variables. As instrumental variables for cigarettes smoked per day in the income equation, we can consistently estimate the income equation by two stage least squares. In part four, we will estimate the income equation by OLS and discuss the estimate of beta one. The OLS estimate for beta one is zero point zero zero one seven, meaning that one more cigarette per day increases income by zero point one seven percent, holding education and age constant. But the effect is not statistically different from zero at any reasonable level. In part five, estimate the reduced form for cigarettes. Recall that this entails regressing cigarettes on all exogenous variables. Are log cigarette price and restaurant significant in the reduced form? The reduced form equation for cigarettes shows that the restaurant is individually significant at the five percent level, but the cigarette price is not. The F test shows that they are jointly significant at the five percent level. In part six, we estimate the income equation by two stage least squares. Discuss how the estimate of beta one compares with the OLS estimate. 
we use the log cigarette price and the restaurant smoking restrictions as two instrumental variables for the endogenous explanatory variable cigarettes. The two-stage least squares estimate of beta 1 is minus 0.042, meaning that one more cigarette smoked per day is estimated to reduce income by 4.2%, holding education and age constant and accounting for other unobserved factors by IV. The t-statistic is minus 1.61. It is barely statistically significant at the 10% level against a two-sided alternative. The two-stage least squares 95% confidence interval is wider than the OLS confidence interval. The former contains the latter. Impact 7. Do you think that cigarette prices and restaurant smoking restrictions are exogenous in the income equation? Yes, they are exogenous in the income equation because the local government determines the cigarette price and the restaurant smoking restrictions and they should not directly affect individuals' income. They only affect income through the cigarettes purchased and consumed by the individuals. Let's do computer exercise two. In part one, we will re-estimate the labor supply function in example 16.5. Using log hours as the dependent variable, compare the estimated elasticity, which is now constant, to the estimate obtained from equation 16.24 at the average hours worked. We use experience and its squared term as instrumental variables for log wage and estimate the log hours equation by two stage least squares. The two stage least squares estimate of the labor supply elasticity is 1.99. It is higher than the two stage least squares estimate at the average hours worked using hours as the dependent variable, which is 1.26. In part 2, in the labor supply equation from part 1, allow education to be endogenous because of omitted ability. Use mother's education and father's education as instrumental variables for education. Remember, you now have two endogenous variables in the equation. The two endogenous variables are the log wage and the education. We have four excluded exogenous variables, experience, experience squared, mother's education, and father's education. The two-stage least squares estimate of the labor supply elasticity is 1.81. The estimated elasticity is statistically different from zero at the 1% level. We can compare the estimates in a table. The two-stage least squares estimate for education becomes insignificant when it is instrumented by parents' education. In Park 3, we test the over-identifying restrictions in the two-stage least squares estimation from Park 2. Do the IVs pass the test? We can use the is that over ID command after the two stage least squares estimation to test over identifying restrictions? Or we can do it manually. We first obtain the residuals mu1 hat.
from the two-stage least squares estimation. Then we regress the residuals on all exogenous variables. The LM statistic n times r squared is distributed asymptotically as a chi-square random variable with q degrees of freedom, where q is the number of excluded exogenous variables minus the number of endogenous explanatory variables. It is 2 in this case. The p-value is around 0 0.8. The IVs pass the OA identification test. Let's solve computer exercise 3. In part 1, because log per capita income is insignificant in both 16.22 and the reduced form for open, drop it from the analysis, estimate 16.22 by OLS and IV without the log per capita income. Do any important conclusions change? We can list the estimates in the table. The estimates are similar to those with the log per capita income as an additional explanatory variable. For example, the two-stage least square estimate for open is minus 0 0.333 here, and it is minus 0 0.337 in the textbook. In part two, Leaving log per capita income out of the analysis, is land or log land a better instrumental variable for open? We regress open on land and log land separately. The T statistic, F statistic, and R squared are much higher using log land than using land. When we regress open on land and log land, only log land is significant. Therefore, log land is a better instrument for open. In Park Street, we return to 16.22, add the dummy variable oil to the equation and treat it as exogenous. Estimate the equation by IV. Thus, being an oil producer have a ceteris paribus effect on inflation. Adding oil as an exogenous explanatory variable, the two-stage least squares estimate for the open is almost unchanged. The oil variable is not statistically significant at any conventional level. Being an oil producer has no ceteris paribus effect on inflation. Let's do computer exercise 4. In part 1, we test the single over-identifying restriction in equation 16.35. What did you conclude? We can type e stat over id directly after the two stage least squares estimation. The p value is 0 0.14. The IVs pass the over identification test. We can also do it manually. It reaches the same conclusion. In part 2, use second legs of all variables as IVs because of potential data measurement problem and informational legs. We we'll estimate 16.35 using only the second legs of GC, GY, and R3 as IVs. How do the estimates compare with those in 16.36? 
using the second legs as instrumental variables, the two-stage least squares estimate for GY doubles in size but becomes statistically insignificant at any reasonable level. In Park 3, we grasp GY on the IVs from Park 2 and test whether GY is sufficiently correlated with them. Why is this important? It is important because the endogenous variable must be sufficiently correlated with the IVs to satisfy the instrument relevance requirement. It is the first stage regression. The F statistic is small, 0 0.14, and its p-value is 0 0.94. The endogenous variable GY is not sufficiently correlated with the IVs. The IVs fail to satisfy the instrument relevance requirement. Thank you very much for doing the computer exercises with me. See you tomorrow. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.